Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Well, I can't believe that Steve has been giving us great movie reviews for 10 years. So happy anniversary. Thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. Now let's go see the tired old queen at the movies. Johnny! Tired old queen at the movies. Ooh, Johnny! This is our 10 year anniversary episode of Steve Hayes' Tired Old Queen at the Movies. 10 years. And because the very first episode that we ever did was a Susan Hayward movie, my favorite actress, Demetrius and the Gladiators. So this was the sequel to The Rogue that was done in Cinemascope in 1953. And they just kept the sets up and they moved the cameras right in and they used Victor Mature again. And this time, instead of Gene Simmons, they cast Brooklyn's own Susan Hayward as Miss Alita. I thought it would be fitting on the 10th anniversary to do another Susan Hayward movie, the movie that made me fall in love with her to begin with. 1961's Backstreet, starring Susan Hayward, John Gavin, Vera Miles, Virginia Gray, and Reginald Gardner, and directed by David Miller. Now, around this time, Susan had gotten married to a guy named Eaton Chalkley and moved to Georgia. She won her Academy Award in 58 for I Want to Live, and she found a guy that she really loved, and they were settled in Georgia, and they formed their own production company so she could start finding movies that she felt she could play, and it was called Carrollton. Well, Ross Hunter approached her. Now, Ross Hunter was the quintessential guy to take these older stars and give them glamour, the glamour treatment. He'd started it early Early on with Barbara Stanwyck and All I Desire back in the 50s. Then he moved on to Magnificent Obsession and he made a star out of Rock Hudson and he put Jane Wyman back on the map. He reteamed them in All That Heaven Allows, which we saw on a double bill with Far From Heaven. He did it for Lana Turner you know, with Imitation of Life, a humongous hit. He then put Doris Day and Rock Hudson together for Pillow Talk and made their careers. So by this time, the actresses of a certain age knew that if Ross Hunter turned his light towards you, it was going to be a classy production. And for Susan, he chose Backstreet. Now, this was the third version of Backstreet. It was a novel by Fanny Hurst, who wrote these romantic, romantic novels. Humoresque was a Fanny Hurst novel. The first version of this had been done with Irene Dunn. The second version was done in the early 40s with Margaret Sullivan and Charles Boyer. And this version, he got his next best competition to Rock Hudson, which was John Gavin. And he was not the most versatile actor Actor, but he was gorgeous. That's right. Now what they did with the story is that they updated it. They gave Susan Hayward a glorious wardrobe by Jean-Louis. I think I'll just take a walk down Fifth Avenue and sneer at everybody's dresses except ours. Susan was used to playing tough characters. You know, she was used to playing the alcoholic in I'll Cry Tomorrow, the woman who goes to the gas chamber and I want to live. She very seldom got to play a glamorous leading lady with a full glamour wardrobe. Now don't be coy. Well, I'm not being coy. Her character's name is Ray Smith. She wants to be a clothing designer. During the war, one night, she meets this handsome guy on leave at an airport. Oh. Oh. Oh, excuse me. And she has to go and meet up with this guy who's, who says he wants to, he's interested in her clothes. Actually, he wants to just put the make on her. So she goes to his hotel room. A toast to your future. The handsome soldier, he's got the room next to this, and the guy starts to try to put the moves on her, and, and he hears it and comes knocking at the door and says, is my wife here, you know, my girlfriend here? And she goes, yes. Well, you know, Ray, I'm due at the airport very soon, and if you're gonna see me off. It's been very pleasant, Mr. Penner. <laughs> well, the next day, they go and have a picnic, and uh, he falls madly in love with her. As simple as that, and as wonderful. And she does a sketch of him by the water. And she's one of these girls that she says to him early on, she says, you know, when I fall in love, that's it. And he just buys it. He goes, Ray Smith. She signs it, R-A-E, all small letters, very chic. Oh, that's how I see myself when I become a famous designer with my own salon. He says uh, he's got to go back and get his life together. And he, she says, well, why don't you go with me? And he says, I can't. And then she says, oh, 
And she says, so this, it was just a fling to you. And he says, no, that's not it. And she says, well, if that's all it was to you, it's all it was to me. Ray, wait. And she goes home and she cries and she won't answer the phone. And he's at the airport and he, he's, his plane is taking off for New York. And she lives with her sister, Virginia Gray, who is uh, the mascot of all Ross Hunter movies. She was always in his movies. He adored her. And Virginia Gray says, Ray, get down here to the phone. He loves you. He says he loves you. Ray, he wants you to go with him on the plane now. He says everything will be a mess, but he wants you to... I am trying, Mr. Saxon. She runs and she gets into her car to drive to the airport. She goes, keep trying the airport. Tell him I'm on my way. The car runs out of gas on the way to the airport. I mean, this is classic tearjerker stuff. She gets to the airport, gets the car. They, they've pulled, you know, the gangplank away and the plane takes off without her. You could have waited. You could have waited. You knew I'd come. So... She goes into mourning for him, and find, and her sister says, why don't you get out of this town, you know? Make a life for yourself with your face and figure. She goes, and maybe he, he will call. And she goes, he's married. He owns one of the biggest department stores. That's what he meant by getting his life together. He's married already. So she goes to New York, saves up her dimes, and goes to New York, and... She gets a job working for Reginald Gardner in one of the big fashion houses, and gradually she works her way up, and she becomes this incredible fashion designer. Stole the fashion spotlight in originals from the atelier of Dalian and his new and talented associate, Ray. Don't sit there wasting my time and drooling like an egotistical idiot. <laughs> and she's walking on the street in Mad Madison Avenue one day, and there he is. Of course, men. Ray? Ray Smith? Is it really you? Of course he turns up. So right away he starts showing up at her apartment doing everything trying to get her to see him. She won't do it. She says you're married. I can't do it. It was wonderful seeing you again Paul. He keeps hinting that his marriage is bad and stuff and a friend of hers comes in town. Kurt you're such a dope. And she's out showing him uh, the town and um, she gets a glimpse of his wife. Of, of John Gavin's wife. Liz, you're getting out of here. Always the devoted husband. Come on. And John Gavin's wife is played by Vera Miles. Now, Vera Miles, she was one of the greatest actresses. She's just all-purpose great actress. Hitchcock had wanted her for Vertigo, and she got pregnant, couldn't do it. And he put her in Psycho, and he put her in The Wrong Man. And uh, she came up against and stood her ground against Joan Crawford and Autumn Lee. She's tough. Well, Vera Miles, ironically, has the Susan Hayward-type role. She is the wife. She's an alcoholic. She's a nasty piece of work. And she knows that she's got the money bags, and she's not going to divorce him no matter what. Please, why don't you give me a divorce? Don't be such a fool, Paul. I worked much too hard getting you. Once Susan gets a load at this, uh, she kind of gives in and the affair starts all over again. I can't go on without you. I won't let you. It gets trashier and trashier and more soap opera and it's fabulous all the way. They all look incredible. They're so beautiful. It's got this lush romantic score. The, the scenery in Europe and everything is fantastic and it leads to this melodramatic five hanky climax that'll just have you bawling. It's so good. I feel she doesn't get her just desserts these days because there was no actress in the 50s who was more prominent and more uh, loved than, than she was. She was, until Marilyn Monroe came on the scene, Susan Hayward was the number one box office person at 20th Century Fox. She was just a dynamic powerhouse. And I think the reason, one of the reasons that I loved her so much is that she reminded me of my mother. Um, the, my mother my mother had that same dramatic way of saying a line, you know. It, it always sounded like a movie line, even when it was like, get your homework done. You know, it was just that. So I think that's one of the personal reasons why I loved her so much. And I thought it was a fitting way to usher in the 10th year of Tired Old Queen at the Movies. So, happy 10th anniversary from all of us. It's Steve Hayes, Tired Old Queen at the Movies. And um, to celebrate, here is John Gavin, Virginia Gray, Reginald Gardner, Vera Miles, and the incomparable Susan Hayward 
in Ross Hunter's Backstreet. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Delicious things to eat. The popcorn can't be beat. 